it is prevailing prayer not just prayer it is prevailing prayer so just like how we did the series on worship i want to start a new series this morning on prevailing prayer how do we have prayers that prevail praying prayers that bear fruit praying prayers that are effective why are some prayers not effective why are some prayers that don't bring the necessary uh, fruit that we expect now this is a vast subject it's a vast subject but instead of uh, it it is going to challenge us in fact it, as i preach it is going to challenge me i want to go into the 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 foundation of prayer this morning the foundation you know the kind of stuff we don't uh, concentrate on we we want to see if the volume is right if the noise is right if we say the words right did we use the the right flowery language did we quote 16 verses and by, and god looking down saying baby i put it in there don't worry <laughs> you know we do all that but we need to go into the heart of prayer okay so i want you to open your bibles with me the book of james chapter 4 draw near to god and he will draw near to you cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double minded wow bible has some strong language you know because the bible is not afraid of anybody hey man i'll read that again draw near to god and he will draw near to you cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double minded let's start with that draw near to god okay so the first principle that i want you to understand is god's promise over la- over our life is that if we draw near he will draw near to us so this is god's promise to us if you draw near i will draw near and that's exactly what the enemy wants to stop us from doing and it started in the garden of eden it started in the garden of eden right the moment when sin happened when adam and eve disobeyed god as soon as sin came to man what was his immediate reaction his immediate reaction was what exactly hide from god that's the lie and deception what the enemy has planted in our dna so as soon as we mess up as soon as we get angry as soon as we we lose it as soon as we sin as soon as we do something that we know what we shouldn't do our immediate reaction in our flesh is don't pray our immediate reaction is oh i can't read the bible today because i'm not i'm not good to touch the bible they're like oh, i'll read the bible tomorrow but now i feel dirty to touch it you know but it it has to be the opposite remember this it has to be opposite bible is not for saints bible is for sinners but this is god's promise to us saying draw near to god can you imagine this as soon as adam and eve sin if they ran to god and grabbed his legs can you imagine god doing this get off my legs get, get. do you think god would have done that no because the bible says he's ever patient his mercy endureth forever So God God's first promise to man is that if you draw near to me I will draw near to you. So that's the first thing we must understand. At, when we go into prayer that is the surety that we need to have God promise that if I draw near he will draw near. But there are some things that back that up and that's the part. It also mentions cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your heart double minded so don't, it's not complicated but i want you to follow through with me the prayer the the basic of prayer has to be based on purity if there is no purity the prayer will not have power i know i lost half of you in the room because they're thinking oh my god that means it's never going to happen for me no you're wrong hear me that's why i said i want you to follow my thought through so if God is saying I can only answer to your prayer based on the purity that you bring forth to my presence. Now, let's let's read verses so we understand better. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart for they will do what? They will see 
God. So basically, God is saying there is something associated with purity that is connected with seeing God. Now, a pure heart is different from a clean heart. It's two different things. The the position of a clean heart is something that you will achieve only after you reach heaven. That is the plane when it is 100% clean. Are you following what I'm saying? But as long as you're on earth, there is a lot of adulteration in our hearts. To get that play, position of 100% clean heart is a matter that will happen when you reach heaven. But until then, we are in the process of purifying our heart. And it is a daily process. Okay? So if purity is what God is drawn to in our prayer, that purification, how do we enter that purification? Because let's, let's read this verse. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 22, the Bible says, Whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Now that is connected with purity. Because you remember the verse that we just read is it talks about having clean hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Faith is having single mind. Are you following what I'm saying? Doubt is double mind. Will I walk? Will I fall? Will, will, will these waves kill me? Will I survive? That is double mind. Okay? Now, the opposite of double mind is having that single mind in God that says, I know God is able. Now, that kind of faith will only come from purity. That kind of single-mindedness, that kind of faith will only come with what? Purity. The best example I can give you is if I'm walking on the road and somebody comes and tries to put, snatch my back, touch my back, I'm going to get violent. No, not that violent, but you know, I'm going to get defensive. You know what I'm talking about? But if you come to my house, you will see... Um, probably a three feet tall little girl who would walk into my room any time she likes and she will put her hands into my bag any time she wants and she'll take anything she wants without any fear whatsoever. And that confidence comes because of the faith she has in the relationships. Because she knows Daddy will not eat me up. Are you following what I'm saying? She knows that whatever belongs to daddy belongs to me. She has that confidence. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, that is faith. Faith is having that relationship with God where you know and you know and you know and you know without a shadow of doubt that you can walk to God and He will answer your prayer. But so what if I were the devil, then I would do one thing to disturb that faith is to break your relationship with God. To disturb your conscience to come to you and say hey you did that last week hey you're not worthy hey you got angry with your wife hey you didn't treat your husband right hey you got upset with your children so there's going to be so much guilt and condemnation in your heart that when you close your eyes and say God I need your help but your prayer is so weak because there is no faith because you think you don't deserve here, this is something I want you to remember. God does not answer prayers. He answers to your faith in your prayer. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the devil, if he's targeting you, what does he want to target? He wants to target that faith that you have in God, that confidence that you know that you come in and say, Abba, Father, immediately heaven is listening to you. It is in that point when whatever you pray, you pray in faith and 
God answers. I want you to open your Bible to Galatians chapter 5, verse 5. Now, this is the first line. It's beautiful. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. So, faith, how does it come? How does it come? Through the what? Through the Spirit. Now, this is where the church goes wrong. Because we have such a wrong idea about faith where we think faith is willpower. We think faith is saying, you know, just, just some people say, just keep saying it, just keep saying it, it will come. Some people are trying to trick the mind. Faith is not willpower. Faith is not about fooling yourself. Faith is not saying the sky is blue, sky is blue, sky is blue. There's part of the blood of Jesus. You say it 20 times and brother, faith will come. No, 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 no. That's not. Faith is not fooling your logic. Are you following what I'm saying? That is a wrong teaching. Faith is not just saying it as till we fool our minds and, and, and then one day our mind says, okay, this is that. No. There is a faith that comes because we think through our mind and there is a faith that comes through God. It's two different faiths. When Jesus mentioned, have faith, if you have faith, all things is possible. That root word means have God's faith. It's not our faith. It's not our weak faith. There is a supernatural faith that comes from God. It is that faith that brings results. It is not us trying to fool our logic. It's not us fooling us saying, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it'll be all right, it'll be all right. Say it 25 times, brother, faith will come. No, it's not true. Now, there is a faith that comes from God that goes beyond your logic. Your logic says it is impossible, but everything in your spirit knows and it knows without a shadow of doubt that all things are possible with him who believes because I serve a mighty God. That is a God kind of faith that will bring the dead back to life. That is a God kind of faith that will bring miracles. It is not fooling your logic. It is not trying to fool your mind. It is a faith that is born in the spirit. When the spirit says, I know the logic says this, but there is a deeper knowing through the spirit. Somebody shout through the spirit. So that's the first thing I want you to know. Faith comes through the spirit. So sometimes, many times, our faith, Prayer is not answered because it is not rated in a God kind of faith that comes through the Spirit. Now, this is the beauty of it. I, I don't want to give you too much details, but I'm going to try my best to, to put it in a capsule this morning. Many times, we pray without the God kind of faith. The faith that we have is the human logic-defying confessions. So we're like, no, 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 I'm going to get this job. I'm going to get this job. I'm going to get this job. This is my day. The devil is lost. I have victory in the blood of Jesus. I'm going to get it. The... Then you don't get the job and you go, you don't want to clap hands. You don't want to shout hallelujah. You don't want to worship God because your heart is quenched. When there is real faith, there is no disappointment. Because you know all things work together for good for them that love God. So the faith that is rooted in the spirit is not moved by what happens around you. So it means your prayer is going to be fueled by the spirit and the faith that comes through the spirit. Second, I want you to go down to the next verse, verse 6 of Galatians chapter 5. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything but only faith working through love. Now this is very crucial in our walk with God. Because there is going to be from time to time people that you don't want to love. But God is saying, I can only move my hand when there is love. If you look through all the miracles in the Bible, Jesus was moved with compassion. His heart touched their hearts. 
It was in that love, miracles happen. Even this morning, it is through that heart of love that heaven moves. As we learn to love, there is power and faith that will build inside you that has power to answer your prayers. If there is no love and there's so much, so much anger inside your heart, you withhold the hand of God. Now, this is a part that many people don't like to think because you just thought that if I have faith, I can do miracles. But the problem is faith is fueled with love. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not faith to do the miracles. It's not about faith to heal the sick. It's about why should they be healed? It's a person behind that sickness. It's a soul that is hurting. There is a person behind it. So it's not about miracles. It's about having that compassion for the deliverance of that captive that makes your heart overflow with love. That brings faith that God acts upon. Sometimes we just make it all about miracles. It is not. It is about why should God do that miracle? Because your heart is overflowing with compassion. And the Bible says, Jesus had compassion upon them and healed them all. Because out of the overflow of love, faith increases. us. And with that faith, you can go to God and say, God, they have to be healed. They deserve to be healed. I stand in the gap for the healing. And there is that furious love that releases furious faith that bring great miracles. Number three, this ah, faith works through forgiveness. That's why I cite. Because it's a hard one this morning. Because we just want faith. We just want miracles. But we don't want to know what fuels faith. Jesus linked faith to forgiveness. The power of prayer and miracles to forgiveness. Now some of you are like, really? Yeah. Let's read it. Mark chapter 11. Verse 25 and 26. And whenever... You stand praying, forgive. Did you hear that? No, you didn't. Come on. Did you hear that? You're acting like you didn't hear that. No, that's, that's for the brother sitting next to me, Pastor. If you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. My friends, that means God is saying, if you haven't forgiven your brother, if you haven't forgiven your sister, no matter how nice your prayer is, I'm not hearing it. That prayer does not have faith for the working of miracles. A prayer that is offered without, unforgi without forgiveness is a prayer that has no faith that works miracles. Can I say that one more time? Prayer that is offered without forgiveness is a prayer that the enemy claims. So when you go up to God and say, God, you got to do this for me. The devil is standing and saying, no God, you cannot answer her prayer because you are a covenant keeping God. You are a God of justice. You are a just God. You are a merciful God. She has not shown that mercy to her sister. She fought with her mother last week. She hasn't called her dad for the last three months. So the devil now stands there and says, you cannot bless her because there is unforgiveness in her heart. But God is saying, when you forgive, my forgiveness will flow for you. You don't need to forgive anybody if you don't need forgiveness. You hear me? You only have to forgive them if you need forgiveness from God. And God is saying, I cannot forgive your sins unless you forgive your neighbor, your brother, your sister. And 
that is a hindrance for your faith being answered, your prayer being answered. So God is saying, before you pray, forgive those you are unable to forgive. I want you to read this. We are going to ask the Lord this morning, God, our prayers cannot go unanswered. How many of you can say an amen? We as a church, when we pray, we are going to see heaven open up our eyes. Can I, can I give you an example? I don't know if I gave you this example before. I think I did once, but this is important. You see, you see the, 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 this, imagine this was a feather. See, it floats and it's easily carried with wind. If a wind blows now, can you imagine what would happen? This would be carried by the wind. Am I right? <laughs> It'll go as the wind blows. But imagine this is wet with water. What's going to happen? It is going to drop straight down. Am I right? Somebody help me clean that later. And that's the problem with unforgiveness. That's a fault. problem with bitterness. The wind is the wind of the Holy Spirit. If you want to be carried by the Holy Spirit, you have to be light as a feather. Your heart has to be light. Look at your heart and say, behave. You listen to me. Come on, speak to your heart right now. Say, heart, you listen to me. You will forgive when I ask you to forgive. You will love everybody because I cannot afford my heart to sink, but it must be carried by the Holy Spirit. Is this church going to be carried by the Holy Spirit? Is this church going to be carried by the Spirit of God? Then it must be fueled by love and forgiveness. Some of you are saying, yes, brother, this is for me. This word is for me. My prayers are not being answered because I am not led by the Spirit. I don't have love, not fueled by love. And I don't have forgiveness. So for them, Acts chapter 2, verse 37 to 39. Now, Peter goes up to a group of people that, that thought that they were in the right because they were Jews. They said, hey, we are doing everything that Moses commanded. We've been going to the synagogue. We've, we've done all the laws. We have kept all the laws exactly. We've, we've, we've grown in the church. We've done everything the priest said we should do. And, you know, we've sacrificed the way the Moses commanded us to sacrifice. We've done everything. But something was still missing. And that's where I want you to pay attention in this verse. And then Peter began to speak to these people and said, and began to show them the truth. The truth about their heart. Now you must understand, he's not talking to Gentiles. He's not talking to people that didn't know God. These people already knew God. They grew with those truths. Now God, now here, hear what Peter says. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. Is this morning, are you cut to the heart? Are you saying, God, I need to fix my heart so my prayers may not be hindered. If, you are, if that is you, shout a name. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? That is humility. When they knew that I have a heart problem, I have a heart condition, they shout, Brothers, what shall we do? That is the question every single person should be asking this morning saying, I don't want to just hear this sermon and go back home and live the same. What shall we do? What shall we do to change the situation so that our prayers may be answered? That when I open my mouth, heaven opens above me. This is my inheritance. Did you just hear what you said? Did you just hear what you said? 
this is your right that when you open your mouth heaven opens about you the purity comes from us consistently asking the holy spirit to help us every day and here what is what is peter said peter said to them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the forgiveness of your sins now hold on hold on peter you you have no idea whom you're talking to in in modern terms you're you're talking to church goers hey we we are born christians so you you should be going down to hindus and muslims and buddhists and preaching the sermon you got it wrong i just came from the temple you don't know what you're talking about peter yes i do this is not this is is not something that is exclusive for somebody else who are not christian this is for the entire humanity whether you were born in a christian house or not just because you you the car just because you live in a garage does not make you a car just like sitting in mcdonald doesn't make you a hamburger are you following what i'm saying just because you go to church just because you were born in a christian family and just because you got a christian name doesn't mean that this is not applied this is applied to everyone and that is the lie in our generation where people think that hey that's not for me that verse is not for me because i don't need to repent i don't need to be baptized because i got baptized when i was a child but hey when you were a child you didn't even know what was happening peter said to repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus this is this is important guys don't don't miss this it's like saying hey i i went to took take a shower it was beautiful the water was fresh and after i i poured water all over my body then i applied soap and i came out no 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 go back in you got to put the soap first and then comes the water it it cannot be the other way around it's not be baptized and then when you grow up you can repent no 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 it has to come with the knowledge when i was preaching in haiti the power of god was moving so powerfully and i told them i said this is a public statement it's not something that you will you will put your hands up in the halfway through and say yes yes brother shaijo you know me i want to accept jesus as a personal savior but don't ask me to come forward don't tell anybody don't don't publish it don't don't tell my family hey there are people that are being martyred in dozens like sheep because they love Jesus how dare you keep this a secret this we are not ashamed of living for Jesus baptizing in the water because Jesus died on the cross naked for us and he was not ashamed to do that here there is 1 2 3 4 5 six of them that are coming into the baptism they are declaring to the world somebody died for me and i acknowledge that and i want to as an adult take a decision saying hey i want to obey god why are there been so many denominations and separation in churches for a simple thing simple thing like that there is here is an adult that wants to declare to the world that i am not ashamed to be a follower of jesus and why has churches been divided because of the simple truth i tell you my friend whether you like it or not the enemy doesn't want you to do this because you know what as soon as jesus got into the water the bible says heaven door open this morning we are going to pray god we don't want to be namesake christians our prayer will be prayer that carries power open your mouth one more time and say father increase my faith give me the grace not to be distracted with the obstacles that are around me and give me the grace to follow you with 100% faith in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every obstacle that is standing in my way shall not distract me in believing god for the impossible because i serve a god through him all things are possible in jesus name i want to ask three basic questions 
that are required for this. The first thing that I'm going to ask him is, do you believe that Jesus Christ was born of a Virgin Mary? And do you believe that Jesus not only was born for you, but he died for you on the cross of Calvary? He says he does. Do you believe that Jesus, he rose again on the third day and he's coming back to gather the saints that are waiting for him? Amen. And all the three questions he says, I do. And that's what we are going to do with the rest of the candidates as well. And based on the confessions of your faith and the command from Jesus to baptize all those who believe in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you in the name of Jesus.